Hi everyone, welcome to my new video on nervous system anatomy and physiology and also we will see about the medical terms in this chapter. So now first let us see what is nervous system. Nervous system of the human body is a master of all the other systems because it is controlling all the other organs in the body and nervous system can be basically divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is made up of brain and the spinal cord and all the other nerves that are present in the peripheries of the body is considered as the peripheral nervous system. So we are dividing the nervous system into central and peripheral and central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord Peripheral nervous system includes all the nerves. Now let us see in detail about the brain. We all know that brain is present within the skull. It is protected with a thick skull bone and the skull bone is called as cranium. Within the cranium we have the brain. And now let us see about the parts of the brain. Brain is made up of three different parts. Cerebrum, cerebellum, then brain stem. And out of these three structures, cerebrum is considered as the largest portion of the brain. And then we have the cerebellum and then brain stem. Now let us see about cerebrum in detail. Cerebrum is divided into four lobes. And the name of the lobes are frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe and occipital lobe. Frontal lobe is just present behind the forehead. Parietal lobe is found on the side of the head. And near the ears, below the parietal lobe, we have the temporal lobe. And at the back, we have the occipital lobe. So these are the names of the lobes of the cerebrum. Frontal, parietal, temporal and occipital. Now let us see about the functions of each lobe and what is the importance of each lobe. The frontal lobe is responsible for thinking, memory, behavior and movement. Parietal lobe is responsible for language and touch. Temporal lobe is responsible for hearing, learning and feelings. And the occipital lobe is responsible for vision or sight. So these are the functions of the lobes of the cerebrum. Now let us move to the cerebellum. Cerebellum is important for balance and coordination of the body. And the third portion of the brain is called as the brain stem. But it has got three parts in it. It is made up of midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. You can remember them with the mnemonic MPM. Midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. And this medulla oblongata will continue down as a spinal cord. And there are respiratory centers and heart centers within the brainstem, which in turn controls the heart and the lungs. And also brainstem is important in maintaining the temperature of the human body. So that is the function of different parts of the brain. Now let us see about the spinal cord. The spinal cord will exit from the skull bone through a hole in the skull bone, which is called as foramen magnum. Through that, the medulla oblongata will continue down as the spinal cord. And the spinal cord is present from the end of the skull until the backbones. So the backbones or the vertebra or the spines are covering the spinal cord. So brain and the spinal cord are considered as the central nervous system. And the spinal cord can be divided based on the vertebral region. We can say that the spinal cord in the region of uh, neck can be called as cervical spinal cord. In the chest region can be called as thoracic spinal cord. After that we have lumbar, then we have the sacrum and in the coccyx region also a little bit of the spinal cord will be there. So the spinal cord and also brain forms the central nervous system. And from the brain we get 12 pairs of cranial nerves. So cranial nerves are nerves that come out from the brain through the skull bone. And then from the spinal cord, we get 33 pairs of spinal nerves. So altogether, 
all the cranial nerves and spinal nerves that are supplying the entire body is constituting the peripheral nervous system so now let us see about the peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system is made up of all the nerves and mainly it has got two types of nerves which are called as afferent nerves and efferent nerves the afferent nerves carries information from all the parts of the body to the brain and it will be processed in the brain and the information from the brain will be carried to the efferent nerves and it will be producing the reactions in the body so sensory nerves are afferent nerves and the action which is produced by us is carried out by the efferent nerves and also we can divide the peripheral nervous system into autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system and the somatic nervous system is mainly controlling the skeletal muscles of the body that in turn controls all the activities and actions that are carried out by the muscles for example walking running eating so all those activities are carried out with the help of somatic nervous system but the next system is autonomic nervous system that means it is acting autonomically it is controlling all the internal organs like heart lungs digestion etc they are acting on their own we don't have to think that the heart has to beat or the lung has to breathe all these activities are carried out by the autonomic nervous system and also the autonomic nervous system is divided into parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves sympathetic nerves are very important in fight or flight responses that means during emergency situation sympathetic nervous system will get activated but all the other vegetative activities will be carried out through the parasympathetic nervous system and you can see in this picture what all the things that will happen in the body during sympathetic stimulation and parasympathetic stimulation and that is all about the central and peripheral nervous system now let us move to certain other structures which are like surrounding the brain there is a structure called meninges which is covering the brain and the spinal cord and it is made up of three layers and the name of the layers in the meninges are dura mater arachnoid mater and pia mater so you can remember it with the mnemonic dap dura arachnoid and pia mater this is a structure which is protecting both brain and the spinal cord and also there is one more thing that is protecting the brain and the spinal cord that is called as the cerebrospinal fluid or csf the cerebrospinal fluid is present below the arachnoid membrane and it is produced by the ventricles of the brain in our body mainly heart has got ventricles the lower chambers of the heart are called ventricles like that within the brain also we have some structures called as ventricles that produces the csf which surrounds both brain and the spinal cord which is in turn protecting the brain and spinal cord from from injuries by acting like a shock absorber and it has got various other functions also so now we will see about the neurons neurons are the structural and functional unit of the nervous system there are millions of neurons in our body and the neurons are carrying the electrical impulses and the connection between two neurons is called as synapse connection between two neurons is called as synapse so there are millions of neurons and synapses in our body and other than all these things there is one more structure in the brain that we should know that is called as the tentorium cerebelli it is just a fold of dura mater which is separating the cerebrum and the cerebellum so they use the term supratentorial to refer to the cerebrum and infratentorial will refer to the cerebellum so tentorium is separating cerebrum from the cerebellum now let us move to the medical terms in this chapter the skull will be referred to as cranium brain will be referred to as cerebro and also cerebrum can be called as fore brain and cerebellum pons medulla oblongata together will be called as the hind brain and also the mid brain is same mid brain so these are the parts of the brain so we can call them as fore brain mid brain and hind brain 
and also the medical term that we use for spinal cord is thecal or myelo and the medical term we use for nerve is neuro so these are the medical terms that we will come across in this chapter so now i'll ask you a question what does craniotomy mean and what does neurography mean you can drop in your answers as comments thanks for watching my video and please don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you